Welcome to the Patient Assessment Management Trauma Skill. In this skill, you will have 10 minutes to perform your assessment and voice treat all conditions and injuries discovered. You should conduct your assessment as you would in the field, including communicating with your simulated patient. You may remove their clothing if you feel it is necessary. As you progress through the skill, you should state everything you are assessing. Specific clinical information not obtained by visual or physical inspection will be obtainable from me when you ask. You may assume you have two partners working with you who are trained to your level of care. This, they will correctly perform the verbal treatments you indicate are necessary. I will acknowledge your treatment and may ask you for additional information if clarification is needed. Do you have any questions? No. Your scenario, you are dispatched to a 20-year-old male patient who has been hit by a car while riding his bicycle. You have two EMT partners with the same certification level as you do. You may begin. Okay, start by donning the appropriate PPE. Is my scene safe? Your scene is safe. PPE is noted. How many patients do I have? You have one patient. And what is the mechanism of injury? Your patient was hit by a vehicle going approximately 30 miles per hour. He was not wearing any protective equipment. Okay, I'll call for ALS backup. ALS is on the way. And due to the mechanism of injury, I'll have my EMT assistant begin holding C-spine. As I approach the patient, what is my general impression? Your patient is lying supine 20 feet from where he was struck by the vehicle. You notice a pool of blood around his left leg. Okay, checking for the level of consciousness. Alert, uh, meaning eyes are tracking. Verbal, answers to verbal stimulation. Painful, uh, responds to painful stimulation or unresponsive. He responds only to painful stimuli. Okay. Due to the decreased level of consciousness, we are unable to ascertain a chief complaint, but are there any life threats? Yes. You see life-threatening bleeding on his left leg. Okay. I will apply a gloved hand, apply direct pressure to the wound. Does that stop the bleeding? The wound continues to bleed. Okay. I will apply a tourniquet two inches above the wound, twist until the bleeding stops, and record the time. Does that control the bleeding? Your tourniquet does control the bleeding. Okay. Moving back to the airway, is the airway open and clear? No, you note blood in the airway and hear snoring respirations. Okay, taking my suction device, I will clear out the airway and I will size and insert an OPA. Does that control the airway? The airway is now controlled. Okay, checking the rate, rhythm, and depth of the patient's breathing. You note rapid, irregular breathing with inadequate depth. Okay, because the depth is inadequate, I will begin bag valve mask ventilations at a rate of 10 to 12 per minute, 15 liters per minute oxygen. Moving to circulation, checking a carotid and radial pulse for rate, rhythm, and quality. Rapid, regular, and weak at the Radial. Okay, checking the patient's skin color, condition, and temperature. Your patient is pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Okay, because the patient is exhibiting signs of shock, I will keep them in a supinated position, continue with oxygen therapy, and apply a blanket to keep them warm. Because of this patient's condition and mechanism of injury, they are a load and go patient. I will now begin my secondary assessment, starting with vital signs, looking for a blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate. Blood pressure is 80 over 40, heart rate 130, respiratory rate was 30. You are now ventilating the patient at 12 breaths per minute. Okay. Are we able to assess a sample history from the patient or anyone on scene? There are no family or bystanders present. Okay. Starting my secondary physical assessment, starting at the head, I'm looking for DCAP, BTLS, and tick. That is deformations, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenors, laceration, swelling, tenors, instability, and crepitus. I'm also checking the pupils to see if they're equal and reactive to light and looking for any fluid from the nose, mouth, or the ears. You note fluid coming from the ears, pupils are pearl. Okay, moving down to the neck, checking for any C-spine deformity, DCAP, BTLS, and tick, looking for a midline trachea or any JVD. No jugular vein distension is noted, trachea is midline, C-spine is stable. Okay, I will uh, size and apply a C-collar to the patient at this time. Moving to the chest, auscultating lung sounds in four fields and performing a, an assessment of DCAP, BTLS, and tick. You know a flail segment on the left chest, decrease, decreased lung sounds on the left side. Okay. Moving to the abdomen, checking for distension, rigidity, and tenderness, as well as decap and BTLS. Nothing noted. Moving to the pelvis, checking for decap, BTLS, um, and looking for any genital trauma. Nothing noted. Down to the lower extremities, decap, BTLS, and tick. Checking circulation, motor, and sensory in the feet. You know an angulated fracture on the right leg. Bleeding is still controlled by your tourniquet. Weak okay. pulse is present on the left leg only. I will have my partner apply uh, manual stabilization to the fracture as I prepare a splint. We'll be splinting from joint to joint because it's a fractured bone, and we'll be checking CMS before and after the splint. Moving to the upper extremities, checking for DCAP, BTLS, and tick, as well as CMS in the hands. No trauma noted. Weak pulse present bilaterally. Okay. I will bring in another EMT assistant. On the head's count, we'll log roll toward us, at which point I will check the posterior side of the patient for any DCAP BTLS tick. 
We'll then roll the patient back. Nothing noted. Okay, because this is an unstable patient, we'll be reassessing our interventions and vital signs every five minutes. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you.